So, welcome to another video interview from Cyber Protection Magazine. This is quite interesting. It started out as a description of a technology which shields against high frequency rates such as those found in uh, 5G. But it quickly turned into a conversation which sounded a bit like a James Bond screenplay. My guests were Dander Brown and Wilson Batista. Let's hear what they have to say. I'm the uh, CEO and um, founder, co-founder of Defender Shield, which is a, a company that builds shielding devices for consumer products, typically like cell phones, laptops, tablets. Um, and uh, we were in the market for about 10 years or so, and we recognized that the fifth generation technology was quite different than the fourth and below. Um, the, the rates, the frequency rates that were being used in these technologies, we, we knew a lot about, and we, we were shielding those things, but we also knew that introduced in the 5G of much higher rates, uh, which have in the past been restricted for commercial use, up to 300 gigahertz. So we began a couple of years ago developing the technology so we could literally shield those transmissions from penetrating to the human body. It so happens at the same time, we were working with various people in the marketplace, the, the military included, that were concerned about the higher rates up to, in the US, 300 uh, gigahertz is now what you can uh, transmit into the environment. Um, but most of it will be around 23 and 60 gigahertz to start with, but it can go up to as high as 300 gigahertz. So with our technology, we, we had to evolve our shielding technology so we could actually shield that. Serendipitously at the same time, we also saw the demand for that in commercial and military use because a part of 5G is the internet of things, the, the interconnection of devices worldwide. It's, it's an interconnecting path of devices and people. And all of a sudden, if you're in security, that's exponentially complicated problems to deal with to preserve the data or the technology that you're using. So we began investigating ways of shielding, taking our shielding that we had just developed and became available this last quarter. And we now encapsulate the technology, a, a cell phone, a laptop, the devices that we would shield for the body. Now we're a shielding protection for those devices in and products that we now have available in the marketplace. Uh, the intent of that is to try to limit the access to the devices that are contained within the uh, cases we provide. But also equally as important is we're concerned about what you may be aware of, um, e EMP, which is electromagnetic pulsing. Um, at these higher rates, for example, um, we know for sure in some countries there are they actually have sent satellites in the uh, in uh, in orbit, and their intent is to generate a 23 gigahertz uh, EMP, and so we know that's also evolving at these much higher rates as well. So our goal was to try to create uh, uh, security devices that can be used in the marketplace, both for commercial and military applications that can actually protect those products, the data it has, and the technology itself from damage uh, in worst case scenarios. And now the compliment is, Wilson will tell you why we do it. <laughs> okay, that's, yeah, that's a good transition. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we do have another guest, Wilson. So what's, uh, what's your involvement in that or what's your story? Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Wilson Bautista. I'm a CEO of June Cyber. We support small businesses and have been working with Defender Shield on um, supporting their product and why it's important. Um, just a little background about myself, a uh, veteran, military officer, retired, um, and been in cybersecurity now for over uh, 15 years, um, multiple certifications, uh, you name it, I probably probably have it, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's not why we're here today. So um, I think that I think that what Defender Shield has 
is a, a great product to the, and it's top of the line in regards to um, protecting equipment uh, from EMP and uh, protecting um, any kind of uh, leakage of any data from uh, any 5, 5G networking that's un, unencrypted. So uh, it's an interesting product and I'm, I'm happy to hear uh, to support the conversation. Yeah, what, what would be interesting to me, I mean, um, you're also uh, the founder of the Cyber Ohana project, right? Um, how, did, how did you guys meet? How, how did the two, uh, so because, you know, the Cyber Ohana project being a nonprofit uh, organization, as I understand it, but that helps veterans uh, to sort of uh, get a foot in the door in the cybersecurity space. Um, and then on the other hand, we have that very physical product of, of, of shielding, um, shielding devices. How did you guys end up together? Yeah, so um, the Cyber Ohana Project is another organization that I, uh, I, I run. I'm the executive director there. And like you said, we support veterans that are exploring careers in cybersecurity. Um, one of the things that we, we had is we had, a, uh, we had a, an event where Defender Shield was one of our sponsors. And they, they um, uh, thank you again for, for that, uh, because it does help veterans um, ex uh, get some training. Right, and that's that's how we initially met. And although although everybody's like, okay, cybersecurity is very technical. Well, information security in general is a broad spectrum of uh, defense and depth, and it includes physical layer security. Right, and this is this is where it fits in, right, uh, with uh, with five G shielding, Faraday cages, and Faraday cage bags. So that's how we met. Okay. Great, and then uh, then maybe a question on on the product, or not really on the product, but uh, you mentioned, uh, and I uh, I know that that that's indeed the case that in the U.S. Uh, the frequencies for five G are relatively high, but I think that over in Europe and uh, I don't know about Asia, uh, they're using lower frequencies, right? Is that uh, is that an uh, issue? Uh, so here are the facts. Um, you hear about 5G. 6G is in development literally right now, and it's going up to 900 gigahertz worldwide. So there is a trend that's occurring, and the adaptation of the technologies, the 5G technologies, is varied from country to country. But the reality of it is in Europe, they go up to 30 gigahertz uh, in some service providers. So they're already building out those um, those networks and those networks will continue for the next five, 10 years. And where you use technology today will unlikely be the same transport technology you use five to 10 years from now. What, when you have a cable service in your house today, uh, you will probably have a coaxial cable that goes from the road to your house. With 5G, the 23 gigahertz is enabling far much more broadband applications to be transported. And so the likelihood will be that it will be a wireless communications from the outside of your house to the inside. And the importance of the 2.4 gigahertz I mentioned to you before is now it's now available in the US for commercial use. That enables carriers to provide Wi-Fi services without a Wi-Fi in the house. So that's the trending that's occurring over time in telecommunications. And that's sort of like what we're anticipating that we, uh, we need the product line to help keep that uh, safe as well as uh, continuing our sh shielding technologies for humans to be safe. Now we're trying to protect the, uh, protect the electronics uh, uh, of the human. <laughs> So uh, it's a little bit different than our original charter. So, so are you are you selling uh, your products globally already? Yeah, we, we just introduced them, um, Patrick, and like all of a sudden, people are coming out of the woodwork for buying it. And so we have um, a, a channel, a worldwide channel for distribution, and we're finding there's a lot of interest in it. Um, but we also believe that they're not really the right target for the product line. They're not really worried about the layers of security that you typically have when you need high security environments. 
Um, and so um, we think there's more applications for the small business as well as the large business. And beyond that, of course, the military services that have that demand. Um, believe it or not, one of the drivers for us was we were working with someone out of uh, West Point. Uh, uh, he was a helicopter pilot. And uh, we were talking to him, chatting about sort of the stuff we do. And he, he, he got very concerned. He said, you know, when we go down in, in the war theater, we're always concerned about losing the access um, for communications with the MP. And that's actually why we really started to say, we got to harden this stuff. Um, and so we're actually uh, mill standard uh, 461 compliant, uh, which is the mill standard that defines EMP testing. So we literally went right in the very beginning to try to be as secure as we possibly can with the electronics we're trying to protect. Okay, so as I understand, you have the, the sort of commercial product line, which uh, literally I could buy to protect my, yes. my uh, mobile phone from being read out. But then you yep. have the, uh, let's call it, uh, yeah, the military products, uh, product range, which is protecting against EMPs. That's the main- Well, product. it's not just EMP. There's layers of security, which of course, Wilson can talk about more than I can, but there's layers of security and it depends on what your class is, what you're doing, what your environment's about. And um, when you are at the extreme level of security, the highest level of security, that includes, um, encapsulating products for protection. And, and so we, we are in that whole gamut space. Wilson, that was a, an, an interesting point. So what are, what are the security layers which are needed uh, in a sort of military environment? So like when we, when we look at the, the product in itself is um, we need to be able to make sure that the communication lines, like the helicopter pilot that Dan mentioned before are are not tampered with, right? They they need to make sure that um, they have clear communication to the other side, and um, EMP um, is made to knock out any kind of electronic signals, um, electronic devices, and this is where, uh, if you're familiar with the Faraday cage, is to keep electronic or any kind of signals out of a, a particular area, and this is where this product supports um supports maybe radio systems being protected in a bag or um, or encryption devices being protected in a bag so that those communication lines will not be disrupted and they can continue on with their mission or uh, get rescued in this in this particular scenario but maybe just a sort of a basic question maybe um, but if my mobile phone is uh, shielded by one of one of your products, uh, obviously someone cannot read it out. But can uh, is the phone still functioning? Do I still receive emails and stuff? Or no, uh, nothing in, nothing out. It, it it encapsulates it, and nothing can be seen in it, and nothing can it come out of it. Uh, and that's designed that way. Um, we do not want. Um, uh, that communications either way, because it, an output port would would allow intrusion access through the Bluetooth, for example. And, and so we, we prevent all those kinds of accidental or on purpose kinds of access. And that's why nothing in, nothing out. So that means if, if I put that maybe on a, on a bigger scale, uh, I could build a room say a, let's call it a panic room for, for a lack of a better word where i can be sure that no one is listening in because there's no electronic communication which can come in at all right well, well I, as you may know patrick that's not theory it's it's done today uh, and it's done at roughly 20 gigahertz uh we actually have available uh wallpaper up to 90 gigahertz shielding that can prevent signals from coming into a room. So you're right. There are certain applications that demand this kind of thing. We have like one of the, the theater, the US theater control is out of Tampa, which is right close by us. And they have those kinds of rooms. They're, they are sealed, insulated, nothing can get in, nothing can come out. 
Um, and so we see that in the commercial side is probably more growing in time because data store is more important in time. Intellectual property is more important in time. And everything is becoming more and more distributed in networks. And so long as you're connected to a network, you have the security encryption that you're looking for. But when you are wirelessly connected, all of a sudden there's another class of concerns you may have. Yeah, and I think that um, um, one thing that I'd like to point out too is that uh, we already know from a cybersecurity and information security point of view that Internet of Things devices are are built less secure than more for operational ability. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? So um, as people are getting more concerned with their privacy and their information security, when we talk about like rooms being completely enclosed and um, Internet of Things being uh, non-secure and 5G being um, a way that the Internet of Things are going to be talking, well, you know, having wallpaper that has this kind of protection protects your house from uh, from people trying to intrude in, like if they're trying to, you know, piggyback on some uh, Wi-Fi signals or or trying to break into your Nest thermostat. So th these are the kind of like commercial consumer use applications if like you're a high high profile target you know a ceo um maybe an over paranoid network administrator uh, right. <laughs> so you know these these things are these things are important it's good to know that you have options you know it, it, all things considered with uh, real world scenarios yeah Wilson, you remind me of something i didn't say it turns out that we know that other countries have EMP pulsing from satellite, but we also know that many satellites are literally being deployed today for 23 gigahertz communication. So it, it's not just a terrestrial network that will be built out. There'll be the satellite networks that are, that are evolving, making uh, the Internet of Things even far more complex than ever before. And so these needs for like concern about this, uh, you're not going to have any high security for a refrigerator talking to your cell phone. Uh, as you point out, Wilson, there's just nothing built in the protocol to, to minimize uh, intrusion into those technologies. And that's likely been the case. And um, that's what we're trying to be concerned about is the, the growing concern about security in time in the environment we live in based on the technologies being deployed. Okay, well, uh, thanks. That was really, uh, really interesting. I mean, it uh, uh, sounds like stuff you would expect in a James Bond movie, but uh, not necessarily in the in the real world. Yeah, um, which, but... which ironically, uh, Peter, uh, uh, I mean, Patrick, um, some of the things I've spoke about is actually being deployed. And it's really there already, but just none of us know it. Um, um, uh, when I was developing the technology, I was bumping into very, very high, very, very experienced, very, very knowledgeable people in this space, and their vantage point was security, not, 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 not shielding. Um, and so we know it's there, and there are certain organizations concerned far more than others about the potential uh, intrusion that can occur with these new technologies. Thanks. That was also some... Uh... Good closing words, I think, and I promise the audience that, that definitely not the last uh, we, we've heard uh, from you guys on Cyber Protection Magazine. I'd definitely like to continue that. So uh, thank you for the, for the insight. Uh, very interesting. And uh, yeah, looking forward to speaking uh, with you again. Patrick, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with you. I, I, we're excited about sort of what we're doing. And it's important that um, people are more aware of the potentials with all these new technologies evolving. And of course, Wilson, thanks so much. As always, you're a wonderful partner. So thanks so much for being here. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me.